guys, this is Christy Falk from Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today I'm going to teach you how to make a Christmas card the quick and easy way using the new Curvy Christmas stamp set. Now, this stamp set isn't available to customers till November 3rd, along with some other items. The whole promo is called Curvy Celebrations, and I'll show you everything that comes in that bundle in a few minutes. But um, as a demonstrator, I was able to get it in October. I love being a demo and get things at a discount and get things early. And if that interests you, I'd love for you to join my team. Just click my join my team link below to find out more information about becoming a demonstrator. If you have any questions, you can uh, contact me by clicking that contact me link below my video description also. Okay, now if you would like to make this card and you want to know the dimensions in the supply list, just go down to the blog post link below in the video description and click on it and you'll find all that information. Okay, well, I'm ready to get started, and first off, I'm going to show you all the uh, stuff that comes in the promotion, and then we'll start making this card. Okay, let me show you everything that comes with this promotion. First off is the Quite Curvy Bundle, and I love this. I love all the curves. Cur curvy dies are really in right now, and I'm so glad that Stampin' Up! came out with their own set. And this uh, will be available in the January to June mini catalog, but you can start getting it November 3rd. And then they also made a Christmas set to coordinate with the curves in this die set. And it's called Curvy Christmas. Now this one is only available until January 3rd, only during the prom promotion, which is November 3rd to January 3rd. And this is a set I'm gonna be using today in my card. And the other thing that's only limited to the promotion is this cute classic Christmas DSP. You can do so much with this DSP. It's a six by six pack. There are uh, three different colors and you get um, four double-sided designs for each color. You get four of each. So this is the Sahara Sand, and then here's the other side here. Then there's Shaded Spruce. So you, as you can see, these are perfect for your Christmas cards, but these designs could be used all year long. You don't have to just limit it to Christmas. And then here's the Cherry Cobbler set. Okay, now they will have a bundle that you can purchase all of these products together at once and you'll save an extra 10%. Love that. The bundle, of course, you can get by itself and that's always 10% off buying them separately. During the promotion, you can only buy the bundle. You can't buy the things separately. Then you can just buy the DSP and you can just buy the Curvy Christmas. So I just wanna let you know that too. Okay, let's get the dies back out because I need to get some out. Really, I'm only going to be using one die this time around, and it's this one right here. And I love, you can make it so it's just a curve, or you can have it with the dots. Really neat. And I'm going to be using the dots today. So go ahead and put that in my little dish, get these out of the way. I'm going to be using my Stamparatus, but I'll get that out here in a minute. First off, we're going to go ahead and do the die cutting and the um, embossing real quick. Okay, I've got my cut and emboss machine out. We'll need the main platform, number one. And we're gonna do some die cutting first. So you need the die plate, number two. And I'm gonna use the magnetic plate too, just to keep it in place. Gonna grab a piece of Whisper White. This is a five and a quarter by three. And I'm gonna grab this guy. Now I want the dots to be along the top here. So you wanna make sure that the blade is on the bottom. So it'd be like this. The blade is right here along the edge. Hope you can see that in the video. So I put that down. I'm gonna put it near the bottom. Okay, just get an idea. Then I'm gonna grab a cutting plate, put it on top. So that's the sandwich you need. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit because it's in there a little too far. There we go, now I won't move that die on me. Run this through. And now you'll see what I mean when you wanna make sure you have the dots in the right spot. Get this back in the screen here. This is what ended up getting cut, and I did want the dots up here. If I wanted it with just the um, swirl here, I'd wanna uh, switch it around and make sure, and that way the dots wouldn't be there. And you can keep this as a little uh, snow man to put on the bottom of a card, just to have some different layers. That's probably what I'll end up doing. I'll go ahead and hold on to that. Okay, and it looks like most of the dots came out. That's one thing with my, bring this back in. Sometimes uh, they end up sticking to your magnetic plate, which is fine, they fall off really easy. But it looks like they're all off. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna do some embossing. So you just need the platform number one. 
and we're going to be using dies from the mini catalog. These are the wrapped in texture. These are mini folders. Whenever you get the mini folders, you get two of them, and they are regular width, so they're not the 3D. So the one we're going to use is the weave. So we'll get this one out of the way. The sandwich for the weave is the platform number one. Then a cutting plate. Then you put your cardstock in here. Now we're going to use a piece of real red. This is five and a quarter by four. And I only want the top part to be embossed. So we're going to put it in like so. And it doesn't matter how far down you go. You want, um, it really, it honestly doesn't matter because you're going to cover it up a lot of this anyway. But you want to make sure it definitely is the width of this because you always want to do your fold first. So we'll take another cutting plate, put it on top, and we'll run this through like so. And now we've got this really neat weave. Love that. I think that is so cool. Okay, now we'll get to stamping. I'm going to use my Stamparatus because I made this card to be a super simple card. That way you can mass produce it if you decide to make this be your Christmas card this year. So I'm going to go ahead and get this real red piece out of the way for right now. I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus and give you some tips on this. Now I found that it was easier to do the die cutting first on your first one. After that, you'll want to do your stamping and then you can go to die cut it. And I'll show you the reason why here in just a minute. So I've got both of my plates because I'll be using both of them. And it is a photopolymer set, so you do need to have that extra pad. You can use the black one that comes with the kit. I like using this deluxe one. And that one is in the annual catalog if you're interested in that. And because we're going to be stamping off of this white just a little bit, I'm going to get my grid paper. Love that they made grid paper fit this perfectly. So neat. And I'm only going to need one magnet, so I'll go ahead and get one of those out. Okay, now I'm going to grab the stamp set. We're going to use the Curvy Christmas. The first stamp we're going to use out of this set is this tree line here. Now I found with the, um, now normally when I put something on a block, I just lay it down and it keeps its shape and I can put it on the block and then it would match up with the die. With this, when I'm lining it up, sometimes I end up curving it and it wasn't getting the right curve for the um, die. That is why I went ahead and um, die cut first. Now let's go ahead, let's see this dark line here. That's what I'm gonna line it up with because if I go all the way to the edge, if you notice on this stamp, there's some extra here and I wouldn't be able to get those trees right where I want them because this would be getting up against this edge. So that's why I'm gonna line it up with that um, long, this edge here. This one was a little too close, so that's why I'm going to the second one. Then I can put my magnet up here at the top. Now, make sure you've got the right side. You want this, the image side facing down. Now I can move this around and get it with my curve of my die, because the die curve is never going to change, but you can change the curve of the stamp. And let's move that over just a little bit because it's not quite in the middle. There we go. So that looks pretty good. That's curved pretty good. Then I can put this down and it's ready to go. Sometimes these are sticky. Let me see if I get that yeah, there so you can see this all. Move this over just a little bit. There we go. And now I'm going to ink this up with my shaded spruce. I'm using the colors in the, actually all three colors that are in that uh, classic Christmas paper. So this is the shaded spruce. Get that stamped. Okay, easy peasy. And if I didn't get it right, it looks perfect. But if it wasn't, I could ink this up again and do it again because it's still in the same spot. Now I'm going to make sure it didn't move on me because with these being sticky, sometimes that makes the paper move. I didn't finish that thought a minute ago. <laughs> so now it's all back in place, all lined up. So I'm going to switch this around because I'm going to use another stamp out of here. Let me just grab, take these out of the box. It'll be a little easier. And I am using the Thinking of You at Christmas. So we'll take this out and I'm going to put it right here. Might move this magnet over a little bit so it's not in the way now that we've got the trees done. And that looks pretty good. I want to be right above my trees. Okay, bring that down. Yep, it didn't move. We're good there. Now I'm going to grab my real red, ink that up, put that down. 
and now we're ready to go. Now, I wanted to show you a real tr a quick trick here. Now, you can do all this stamping. Don't move any of these things. So we'll turn this over. Actually, it doesn't matter what order you're gonna do it in. We'll go ahead and do it backwards. Here is another piece that has not been um, oh, cut. So this is another five and a quarter by three. I'm gonna line it up with that line again like we did before. We'll put this one over here since we're doing the words first. Put that up. Do this. Flip this around. Do your shaded spruce. Oh, let's move that magnet again. There we go. I'm sure there's a place I could put that magnet so it's not in the way. But I'm not gonna try to figure it out now while you're sitting here watching. There we go. Now, you can get all your stamping done. And then this, you wanna make sure again that we've got the dots on top, and we do. Now it's gonna line up perfectly because the stamp was still in the right place with that curve. So that's my trick on how to do that and it makes it a lot easier, I think. Okay, we're gonna grab the inside of the card. This is a five and a quarter by four. And I'm gonna grab this guy, this uh, pine branch. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up with that first line again, just so we can remember how, just keep doing it the same way every time so you don't have to overthink it. Then I'm gonna lay this here. And I'm gonna put it so it kinda goes off the paper a little bit. Bring this down, do the top one this time. I love having these two, and now I can do up to four stamps, which is what we're gonna do. Oh, I moved the whole thing, there we go. That stamp was good and sticky. So just put it right back down again. I'm gonna grab my shaded spruce. Make sure I've got this in the, there we go, bring this down a little bit. Okay, bring this down and stamp it. Now the hinge isn't uh, perfect, but I'm gonna show you what I did. Get this back in place again. So I don't know if you've ever done the hinge. That's another neat thing about the Stamparatus that the others don't have. I'm going to move this down two notches. So I'm gonna pull this up. There's one notch, there's the second notch, okay? Ink this up, get my little dish out of the way here. Looks like both my dishes are gonna be in the way. Let's move those out of the way for right now. I know a lot of people like those dishes, but they're getting in the way. <laughs> Put this down. And it is overlapping a little bit, but I thought that looked just fine. That makes it look like we're making a little ivy thing. Bring it down two more. One, two. Get that inked up. Stamp that. And now you've got a neat little border on the bottom. Now, since we're mass producing this, we are going to do a greeting for the inside. So I'm gonna turn this over, put it back in the original position, so it's all the way to the right. Now I'm gonna grab my last stamp, and this is the long one. This one says, may your days be merry and bright. So I'm gonna put that near the top where I want it, like so. Bring that down. And now I'm gonna use my cherry cobbler. I'm sorry, real red, not cherry cobbler. I'm actually not using the colors. Sorry about that. Um, it is real red. There we go, because I just want to use real red ribbon. That's why I changed it to real red. So the paper is cherry cobbler. We're not using cherry cobbler paper for this time, so that's why I was able to go with the real red. So now you can mass produce the inside with no problem. So you've got everything right where you want it. You've got this one ready to go and this one ready to go, and you just start stamping. That's the neat thing about the Stamparatus. I love it. Now when you store it, you can leave one. Let's go ahead and get that magnet out of the way. You, this one can lay flat. You can't lay this one flat because see how it's kind of angled up. You don't want it to break, so I just always disconnect this and then just lay it on top. So get this out of the way and always make sure you put that magnet back on the back because if these crash together, they could break very easily. So you don't want that to happen. Okay, now that we've got these stamped, we are going to do some stamping without the Stamparatus because I wanted to put some snow on here. This one is completely done. So you know, let's go ahead and put that in the card base. This is a shaded spruce piece, five and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to fold this in half as usual. Okay, and let's go ahead and we want the fold to be on top. Grab my seal. We'll go ahead and get this put on the inside. Okay, there we go. So now you can just sign your name and you're ready to go. 
Now we'll take this again. Now I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Pierce mat because it does work better and I grabbed that paper out of my Stamparatus to use again. Now we're gonna do some snowflakes on here. There, if you look at the die set, you can see little snowflakes and stars and these can be even, even smaller snowflakes is how I'm gonna be using it. And I'm using the Sahara sand for this. So we'll open this up. And first off, I'm gonna stamp the snowflake, the actual snowflake, and kind of do it randomly. I could have gone with like a blue or something like that, but I like the colors in that paper. Except like I said, I did change the, uh, to real red instead of cherry cobbler. Because I want it to match my ribbon I'm gonna be using here in a minute. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put another one right here. Now there is some empty space here, so I'm gonna grab this. Now I want these to be lighter than those snowflakes. So I'm gonna stamp off and just randomly put little, hopefully you can see these are not showing up real well. I just kind of do that in a few different places. It just kind of fills it up a little bit. It doesn't have so much white space. But always make sure you stamp off. And you can even put some down here with your trees if you want to because they shouldn't just stop because those words are there. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we've got all that done. Now we could easily just keep it like this. If you don't want to color these, that is just fine. I don't need that stamp and pierce mat anymore, so look at that out of the way. Because I almost didn't color these in, but I thought, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and color them in just to make them look a little better. But like I said, if you're mass producing a bunch of them, you really don't need to, because I think they look cute without it. But I'm gonna use my uh, light shaded spruce from the shaded spruce blends combo pack and the light soft suede from the soft suede combo pack. So I'm gonna take these and you'll see how quick and easy it is. I'm using the light because this, the stamped version is already the dark. So I don't want it to, I still wanna see my stamped lines. So I'm just going real quick and just going straight. I'm not having to blend. And I just thought that looks so good. And it just goes really quick and easy. If you don't fill it up completely, then that's fine. That's kind of like a snow, some snow on your trees if you don't get it filled in completely. And it does have that more of a drawn look. So when you draw stuff, a lot of times um, getting out of the lines, that just kind of goes along with the theme, with the look. So just hurry up and keep doing these. See how quick this is going? I'm not even gonna speed this up because I want you to see how quick it goes. And I'm getting quicker as I go. And if you mass produce cards, whenever I mass produce, I do one step, get that step done on all the cards. Because as you go, you get faster and faster with that step. So you just keep doing the same step over and over again. Like I would have done all the Stamparatus at one time. Then with the coloring, I would get all your trees colored in on all of your layers. Then you can go with your soft suede and I'm gonna do the little trunk. Because as you go, you just get faster and faster at it. If you keep going back and forth between each step on each layer to get each layer done at the same time, I mean by itself, hope that made sense. <laughs> it's gonna take you a little longer. Just do each step on every single card and then go back and do the next step and you'll just get faster at it. See, all colored in and that just gave it a little more color. Now, we'll go ahead and grab these pieces, but we're not gonna use them just yet. I, here is a piece of the um, paper that Christmas, uh, Classic Christmas, couldn't remember the name. This is a five and a quarter by one and a half, and I'm using the Sahara Sand. And you could use all of those designs in this color work. So you don't have to have them all with this design, because this one will work too, looks like snow. But this is the side I'm using. So go ahead and get that seal on there. And you're gonna put it at the bottom of your real red piece but I'm gonna leave a little uh, border right here. So I'm not gonna put it all the way to the bottom. Let me stand up here so I can see what I'm doing a little better. Okay, get that straight. Looks pretty good. So now we've got that down. And this one, before I put this down, I'm gonna put my ribbon on. So this is the real red sheer ribbons in the mini catalog. You need a seven inch piece and a five inch piece. I'm gonna take the seven inch piece, let me grab my silicone mat here. I'm gonna put, take that back, we don't want the red, we want this piece. You're gonna put some adhesive right along the top corners, like so. So I'm getting right close to the edge, that's why I'm using my silicone mat, so I don't get an adhesive on my workspace. Then you take that seven inch piece and wrap it around the very top of that white piece. 
and then when you wrap this around make sure that that end see i kind of angled it up and it's starting to show a little bit make sure it is definitely behind that white paper because you don't want that end sticking up up here so the same on this end make sure it's all lined up and i even angle it down a little bit so there you go so now we're ready to go let's go ahead and attach this to the card and I want to make sure that I put some on this ribbon too because I don't want that corner popping up on me so make sure you get a lot of seal right there at that corner and then where you normally would put it along the curve here then we're going to put this on top of here but I want some of this to be showing and with these dots I don't want any red coming through these dots I just want that Sahara sand so kind of put this down I've definitely just got Sahara sand showing and that width up at the top looks pretty good so we'll get this end on straight make sure it's all on straight it looks pretty good okay we've got that ready to go then we'll turn this over and we'll put it on the card base and it looks like I might not have centered that very good so let's go ahead and pop this up that's what I love about that seal you can lift it back up again the first 10 minutes after 10 minutes it is permanent so we get that centered a little bit because it looks like I might have made this a little wider than this but that's okay we will just center it it'll look just fine so if that happens to you because I've already got the ribbon on there if I had didn't have the ribbon on then I could go ahead and trim that white but I don't want to clip on that ribbon so that works just fine perfect now I'll put some more adhesive on here sometimes I like it when I make little mistakes because then I can let you know in case you make it how to fix it now we're going to put this on the card base right there in the center and then I'm going to take the five inch piece and you thread it underneath the attached ribbon like so well I keep there we go it keeps angling up and going on top so we've got that underneath and then I'm just going to tie this on with a single knot I don't do a double knot because it just doesn't look as pretty single knot is all you need kind of twist it around so it looks good to you now you can do a double knot if you feel better about that but there's my single knot you can scoot it each, in any way you want and grab my scissors and cut these at an angle like so so they're even and that is the card well I hope you had as much fun making this card as I did it is super quick so when you start making it yourself you'll be, you won't believe how fast it goes I had a lot of tips I was getting you so it might have make it see, made it seem like it took a little longer but I want to make sure I gave you all those tips so it'll go faster for you now if uh, you want to make cards with me again make sure to click my subscribe button below in the right corner of my video or you can find it there in the video description and then when you do you'll see a little bell icon pop up click on that and then select all that way youtube will notify you every time i upload a video and you won't miss anything you can also follow me on my blog facebook and pinterest and instagram and you can find those links below in the video description as well now if you live in the united states and don't have a stampin up demonstrator i would love to be yours if you need a new catalog mailed out to you, I would love to mail these out to you. This is the current annual catalog, and this is the August to December mini. And um, just click my contact me link below and email. Th then you can give me your uh, email, not your email, the mailing address. I keep wanting to say email. I did that in my last video. You want to send me your mailing address, and I can get these mailed out to you right away. And don't forget about um, the possibility of earning a $50 shopping spree on me. When you collect 10 doilies, you earn a $50 shopping spree, and you can find out how to do that in my doily rewards link below in the video description. Make sure you click on that and read everything. That way you can get, it, uh, get that $50 shopping spree. I'm sure you'd love to have $50 to spend. And I even pay the shipping and tax. I want to make sure you knew that. Well, it's time to go. Let me get the card back out so you can see it again. Uh, please help support my channel by giving me a thumbs up and commenting below. I really do appreciate it. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.